be found out that they have been sexually active. Her cell phone has been taken away, no longer has a bedroom door, and she cannot participate in any after-school activities. It sounds like two adults got really embarrassed that they missed something right across their hallway, and they just used all of their power. What up, what up, what up, what up? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show. I'm so grateful that you're here. Talking about your mental and emotional health, your marriage. My promise is I'm going to sit with you in the mess and we're going to figure it out. Whatever the next right step is, I'm here and we're going to walk alongside each other and try to talk it out in a few minutes and then figure out what's the next thing we can do. Um, Sometimes we can solve it all and sometimes we can just light a candle. And let each other know, like, it's going to be a long, hard path. But we give you a first steps here. If you want to be on this show, talking to real people who are going through real challenges, um, give me a buzz, 1-844-693-3291. It's 1-844-693-3291. Or go to johndeloney.com slash ask, A-S-K. And listen to this. This is important. The Dr. John Deloney Show listener survey is now live. All right, so here's the deal. We get calls or emails from all over planet Earth, all over the place. And I spent my career working with marginalized populations, with people with special needs, with mental health things. And also, we have untold, like, gajillions of listeners. And so creating a show like, this is what Deloney wants to talk about versus, hey, this is what the audience wants to hear and wants to learn more about and wants to know more about and wants to experience. Um, This gives you an opportunity to help be a part of the show. I really want to know what you think. Um, If you want the show, like to take more calls, take fewer calls, take deep dives on calls, um, to try to go back and call old callers. Like, what do you think? um, What what, what would invite this show uh, to make it better? So I want to hear what what you love, what you don't love, things that you think can make the show better. And uh, so here's how you can participate. You can text SURVEY, S-U-R-V-E-Y, to 33789. Text SURVEY to 33789 or click the link in the show notes if you're listening on podcast or watching on the YouTubes. You can enter to win a $100 gift card. That's pretty cool. But the bigger thing is you'll really help shape the direction of the show. And um, that's a gift for a whole bunch of people who are sitting by themselves trying to figure out what's the next right move. So thank you so much. Survey to 33789. Text that in or click the link in the show notes if you're listening on podcast or on the YouTubes. Let's go out to my hometown, H-Town, and talk to Michael. Hey, Michael, what up? Hey, John. Thanks for taking my call. Of course, brother. What's up, man? Hey, so here's my question. I'm a recovering pornography and masturbation addict. And I am trying to find the right way to express sexual desire with my wife when, when really all of my education, if you will, came from pornography. And that's a hard thing to, um, talk to my wife about. Hmm. That's a pretty, that's a, that's a fascinating conversation, man. All right. So can I give you some background? I'd love that. Yeah. Talk me through it. What's, what's, what does addict mean? Yeah. So I, um, I mean, ever since my teenage years, I've been addicted to pornography and, um, like daily, hourly sneaking off into the bathroom at work, uh, masturbating four or five, six, ten times a day. Like what do you, when you say addict, what do you mean? Yeah. Um, weekly, maybe not every day, multiple times a day, but, uh, I haven't been able to stop for about 15 years. Okay. And, so and, and you're saying you, you, you look at it once a week and like the compulsion builds over the course of a week. And then you just have this urge, this urge, this urge. Yeah. I've always known it's wrong. I've always tried to avoid abstain, but, uh, I always end up going back to it for whatever reason. Have you ever, let me fast forward. Okay. Okay. Go for it. I, I realized this was quite the problem in 2020 during COVID when I was working from home and I fessed up to my wife. I realized I needed, I was, an addict. And I, um, started to attend recovery groups. And, um, since then I've made a lot of progress and I'm not perfect by any means, but I'm very grateful for 12 step programs. And I am grateful for the progress I've made as a recovering addict. But, um, 
my wife and I have been married for nine years. Uh, we've got a couple of kids and we were both, uh, virgins when we got married, you know, relatively innocent, if you will, especially her. And, and as we progress into marriage, I I'd like to, uh, you know, be a little bit more, not experimental, but adventurous in the bedroom. And she's all good with kind of the vanilla, black and white. And I have a hard time expressing my wants or desires when I know that most of what I learned and most of the things that I'm interested in, I guess, um, I, it can be related to fantasy, related to my addiction. Okay, uh, man, what you're talking about is really important, and so I'm glad that you're having this conversation, and it's happening to marriages all over across the country, secular, faith-based, like, it's, it's happened to everybody. Just porn has become so ubiquitous as our, in our culture, right? Um, it's become a part of things. So I'm going to unpack this as quickly as I can, but I'm going to be pretty direct with you, and I want you to stop me anywhere. Normally, I would want to get to know you, get to know your background, and learn about your kids and stuff like that, but you've laid a couple of grenades on the ground, and I want to make sure I jump on them before they blow up for everybody. Is that fair? Yes. All right. First thing, you have referred to yourself as an addict. I can't even count the time. I tried to count, and then uh, I've, I've lost count. What is that? What is referring to yourself as an addict? What is that getting you? Because it feels like it's an important part of your identity. I have tried to stop since I began uh, behavior. And I haven't been able to until I uh, engaged with the 12 step recovery program and admitted that um, You're powerless. I'm powerless. And I had to, uh, you know, turn to God and my support group for help. And only then was I able to start making progress. Okay. And for that reason, I, I, I know I'm an addict. I, I just, uh, it's, it's not me. It's not like me to engage in something that I understand to be so wrong. And I just can't seem to quit uh, until the last few years when I've made some pretty significant progress. And when you say you've made progress, well, I'll, let me just cut to the chase. I understand that addiction is on a spectrum. Okay. And I've sat kneecap to kneecap with guys who have blown their lives up because they've wrecked their car. They're looking at pornography on the phone while they're driving, right? And I don't want to yep. minimize where you are. Here's what I'm trying to get you to, to, to maybe expand a little bit. Sometimes we have, we struggle with addiction. Sometimes a body and a brain screaming for some sort of connection will get what it needs from us. Even when our, our well-intentioned, well-meaning part of our brain is, is trying to talk us out of it. And so my question to you, the things you are mentioning, because then we go on to, hey, you've been married to this one for, for nine to 10 years. You have um, two kids. You've made humans together. And so I'm wondering, what about your relationship? Yeah, one person's going to, be more into adventure. One person is going to be more into stability. One person is going to be more. That's, that's common. What's, what is, what's concerning to me is after 10 years, y'all are not at a place where you can say, I want to do something adventurous. I want to do something that feels a little forbidden, or I want to do something that feels a little bit just like naughty and with you. And it's us in this bounded, we're, we're ride or die together. And that he or she might go, that sounds crazy. All right. Or walk me through this. Like why? Like it feels, it feels, it feels a little bit wrong, but it's with you and it feels, and that is cultivating mystery and that's cultivating adventure and it's cultivating desire, right? The, the forbidden, right? The thing that I can't have that I could have. And now that you guys have practiced safety, you're a husband that shows up. You're a husband that works on himself because he wants to be a better version of himself. But now there's this practicing desire and that seems to be missing. And so I'm connecting the dots and tell me if I'm wrong. I'm connecting the dots on you're a lonely, lonely man in your marriage. Not because you have a wife that doesn't want to try X, Y, and Z sex act, but because you have a, a, a relationship where y'all can't laugh and, and kind of poke at each other or put something on the table like 
<laughs> I want to try this. And have her be like, I don't know how that's possible, but okay. Uh, okay. Like, let's talk through it. Or why in the world yeah, do you want to try yeah. that? You see what I'm saying? I, I do. I appreciate that uh, that point of view. I, I think we, we do have a good relationship. We've got, we spend a lot of time together. We've got a good marriage. But she we doesn't know you, brother. Have fun. She doesn't know you. Well, I guess here's my point. My question is, she has no desire for it. She'll do, she'll do whatever. She'll, you know, play along, if you will. But I would really like to do these things with for an app to make her smile bigger. And that's just not going to work for her. It, she She has no desire for it. And I think part of it is a mental block on her side because she knows, oh, well, Michael learned that from, you know, looking at pornography. And, do you know that, that do you know that to be the case or is that you are yeah, you in Yeah, uh, we talked about this. Okay. Yeah. So she has taken a list of of things of of acts if you will off the table because of where you picked them up. Yeah. And and she has a hard time and I don't want to put this all on her. It's not her fault, of course, but I got she's you. You definitely You're a good man, dude. You're like I you don't you're, I don't I'm not hearing a bad thing. I I'm hearing a a I'm hearing a flyby. I'm yeah, hearing two I people appreciate who, that. who love each other who are very lonely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she just uh, doesn't want to experiment because that, that takes her back to when I first opened up to her about addiction. And those are some of the most trying times of our lives. Okay. If you... There's a way to talk about yourself in um, I'm an addict, I'm an addict, I'm an addict. Hi, my name is John, I'm an addict, I'm an addict. And now I'm getting help from this addiction. And then I go home. Let's let's say it's alcohol or let's say it's food. Let's say food's easier because it's it's less reactive. I'm an addict. I sit down with my wife and say, I'm an addict. I can't stop eating gummy candies. I've tried. I can't. I don't want to. And I find myself buying bags of, of junk food. I can't stop. I can't stop. Whew. I'm an addict. I'm an addict. And then I go to meetings. I, I introduce myself to strangers. And the first four or five things I say about myself is I'm an addict. I'm an addict. I'm an addict. I'm an addict. This is my core identity. I'm a man who cannot trust himself and cannot be controlled. I cannot control himself. That's, that is my announcement to the world is who I am. And then I go to my wife and we go to a really fancy restaurant for an anniversary. And I say, I really want you to try this dessert. It's amazing. It's a five-star chef. It's so great. There's no way my wife can enjoy that dessert because she knows that she will be complicit and walking a razor's edge with her husband who announces to the world that he is less than, that he is somehow this thing versus here's the other way to tell that story. I'm somebody who was so desperate for connection. I ended up doing some dumb things trying to get pseudo connected. I ate too much. I drank I looked at pornography all the time. I didn't want to. I felt terrible when I ate like that. I felt awful the next morning and anxious. Alcohol made me anxious and not sleep. I woke up this way and I realized I, I'm, I'm powerless, man. And so I met, went and met with a group. And what AA gives you, it does give you some steps, but I think the magic in groups is it gives you connection, the thing that your brain is trying to compensate for. And when you come back home to your home yeah man now my wife knows right like i struggle with food but she knows i'm i am connected as the day is long i've got great friends my marriage is whole my relationship with my kids is golden and so if i come in with a bag of candy now she'll say what happened today not what happened to you and you see the difference there i do there's a context in your home that makes sex this very very dangerous thing instead of this very connective, wonderful, uh, unifying thing. 
full of mystery and laughter and fun and eroticism, all the stuff. So do you believe that the key for me moving forward is a distance from my addictive behaviors, which will help, but B and probably more importantly, stop referring to myself as an addict and, 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 and just move on with life in a way that we can build something new. I would love to hear you say, Hey, I'm a guy that used to really struggle with connection mm. and now I got a gang. And that you'll, you're even hearing in the language, like when you talk to somebody who struggles with alcohol, the language used to be, you're an alcoholic. This is who you are versus let me hear your story. And I want to know what happened in your day that this was the only way your body figured out how to cope. Because that's where the story is. That's where the magic is. That's where the freedom is. And so my question to you is what happened in your life that this was the way that you felt alive? Because as a kid growing up trying to always do the right thing, the perfect thing, the good thing, the not naughty thing, you, you, you created a world that was so pressure cooker that your brain found a way. And then the world handed you an iPhone or an iPad or a computer and said, here's the World Wide Web. I'm going to make it easy for you. See what I'm saying? In, yeah. in that context, I don't think you're a bad guy. I think you struggled with pornography, no question about it. And more importantly, you are doing a thing that you didn't want to be participating in. Yep. And that is the more important question to me. Yeah. Over. I, I su- go ahead, go ahead. Growing up, um, you know, I've always been very active in my church, and uh, my dad was a leader in the church, um, just a service position. But people always complimented me on my behavior and how well rounded I was, and the great attributes and uh, skills and everything that I had. And people always said, "Oh, you'll be the next, you know, so and so in the church." You're a uh, performer. Or, That's right. And and. I I always felt like I was a great kid, but I had this one dirty little secret. And I feel like now that I'm 31, I uh, I maybe I, I missed out on a lot of potential. You or did. I wasted yeah. a lot of time. Here's why. I, Here's why. Yep. Because the ticker tape running underneath the story that was your life was I'm a piece of crap. These people only love me for how I can sing and dance. These people love me for who I could be one day. And inside, there's a little kid screaming at you, what about me? And that's a body that is desperate for connection. And that's a body that gets into pornography. That's a body that gets into alcohol. That's a body that gets into food disorders. Screaming for connection. That's a body that gets addicted to to social media. Cause it's just like crack for a disconnected brain. Yeah. And so what I would tell I am you, definitely I, the, 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 are you a social media guy? Not at all. Okay. No. Good for you. What I would say that the thing, the quote unquote, did I waste time? I would never say that because it brought you here. Okay. That's a, that's a fool's errand. But what I would tell you is you spent a lot of energy, um, <sighs> thinking you weren't a very good person. And I disagree. Well, I appreciate that. Okay. Here's the reset that has to happen in your house. Y'all have to, you probably should take your wife out. And when you've heard me say, build something new, build something new, build something new. The conversation is, I'm going to stop referring to myself as an addict. I'm a guy who struggled with connection. We have two kids. We've been married almost a decade. We have a couple of uh, what I would call um, yellow flashing lights. It's the seven to 10 year mark is one of the yellow flashing lights. A couple of young kids is one of the yellow flashing lights. A, a mismatch in sexual energy is one of the yellow flashing lights. And now you're having all of them in, in, a, right. in, a, in a marriage, right? So everything's kind of starting to pulse a little bit. And what usually happens is she will double down on being a great mom. You'll double down on being a great employee. 
because that's the way you both feel like you can help this unit because the unit is disconnected. And that's when you end up, like I say all the time, six inches apart on the couch and 6,000 miles away from each other. Right. And you can still laugh. You can still play. You can still have a good time. But she doesn't know you. And you don't know her. And so I think somebody has to sit down at the table, and I'm hopefully it's going to be you. And you're going to say, I want to control, alt, delete. I want to reboot what sex means to our marriage. And if it has been over the last nine or 10 years, you trying to get her to do things, that's pornography. That's, yep. you, that's using her as an object to get for you to get off, for you to get what you want. That's different than I want to go with you hand in hand on an adventure. I want to try something forbidden with you because we signed up to ride or die and we can do forbidden things because we're, we're, we're in the same gang. Right. A way I've seen this successful. And I said it once a couple of years ago as a joke and it kind of took off. Right. And I hear about it all from all over the place is the Deloney erotic envelope system. Have you heard me talk about that? Oh, oh yeah. We've, we've tried that. Okay. How did, how did it work? I guess it didn't work very well for you guys. How'd, how'd it go? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, I wrote down all sorts of things, yep. right? That's who I am. And hers were very basic. Okay. And at the end of the day, she just had a really hard time pulling one of my suggestions, you know, at random, because she was scared of pulling some of them. That right and, there is what you'll have to talk about. And yep. if she can't or she won't, Make peace with her past, with your past, with her past, with y'all's past, and then come to now. Then y'all have to deal with that. Because she stayed with you. And she oh, said, yeah. I'm, We're ride or die. We're all in together. Except yep. you're not. Because she won't even she won't even have that conversation with you. That's not ride or die. That is ride or well, I'll ride with you, but you be quiet over there. It's not ride or die. See what I'm saying? I know that's hard to hear, but there's parts of you that she won't even discuss. Yeah. So she has been a part of her own spouse recovery group, and that's been very helpful. And it's been a work in progress for years, but I, I think this is going to help us move in the right direction. I appreciate that. I, 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 Dude, I'm a mental health guy. That's my world. I think you are using some... Whew. You, you, I don't want to... I'm trying to say this the right way. I would love to see y'all step away from over-therapizing all of this. Not to minimize it, not to say it wasn't evil, not to say that anybody's feelings aren't valid, not to say that what you, what, what, what buried you for 15 years wasn't real. Oh, of course it was. And her feelings and her betrayal and all that wasn't real. Of course it was. But you are both walking through this identity that you've given each other. I'm a recovering wife and I'm a recovering addict. I'm an addict. I'll always be an addict. Dude, it is really hard to move forward with those chains. I think we sit down and say, all right, 10 years in, two kids, we love each other, we're here. We got to talk about sex, what it means to us, what it's meant to us, what it's going to mean to us in the future. There's some things about my life that I can't even put on the table because they, they shut you down. And I need you to stay present with me. And after 10 years, what are the things that even when you think about them, you continue to shut you down? We need to put all that on the table. And we might need to see a counselor with that. Okay, because it might be that we, we don't have the tools to talk to each other there. But as far as I'm concerned, that's where the challenge lies. That we can't put these things on the table. Because then when it's all out there and then our bodies respond and we're like, no, no, I'm still going to be here. I'm safe. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I don't desire doing this particular sex act just to do it. I desire you. I want to make you laugh. I want to have adventures. I want you to be a participate in X, Y, and Z. All right, now maybe we can get onto that. And maybe she'll give herself permission to begin to dream, to fantasize, to have some adventures of her own in her mind. And then uh, obviously with you, because it's not this laden addict, 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 addict. Hopefully that helps, brother. 
I would love to hear back after y'all have that conversation. Um, maybe you uh, flip it. Maybe the John Deloney erotic envelope system, which cannot be bought. You just go to Walgreens. It's like 99 cents. Get some envelopes. Um, maybe you start completely over and begin to court your wife. It's going to hold your hand. We may French kiss. We're just going to we're going to snuggle for a while. And we're going to rebuild safety and trust intimately, sexually, that way. Whew. Sorry, my brother. This is a tough one. We'll be right back. Here we are in the middle of Lent. Lent is one of the cornerstones of the Christian faith. It's a time of reflection, taking a hard look at our lives, prayer, fasting, and more. Lent is about finding meaning, purpose, discipline, finding connection with God, and finally, letting go of trying to control everything. If you've grown up in a Christian faith and you've heard about Lent, and this year you want to jump in with both feet, or if you're not a person of faith at all and you've always wondered what your coworkers are talking about during this season, my friends at Hallow have created the 40-Day Lent Prayer Challenge. I went through the Lent reflection today on my own. It's already an extraordinary walk through 40 days of meditating and making changes in our lives. The 40-Day Challenge is about transformation, and Hallow has created a path with Lent-themed music, stories, prayers, and even some special things for your kids. I am personally going through the challenge, and I hope you'll join me and millions of others across the globe. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and for listeners of the show, you get three free months of Hallow, all 10,000 plus prayers, meditations, music, and lecture series, and more, all of it, by going to hallow.com slash Deloney. That's three free months of the app at hallow.com slash Deloney. All right, let's go out to Grand Rapids, Michigan, and talk to... Lori. What's up, Lori? Hi, Dr. John. Thanks for taking my call. I appreciate your time and your guidance. Of course. What's up? So a couple of weeks ago, my husband and I discovered that our 15-year-old daughter was sneaking her boyfriend into our home in the middle of the night through her bedroom window. Oh, man. And as the story unraveled that weekend, we found out that this isn't the first time and that they have been sexually active okay. in their in her bedroom across the hall from our room on multiple occasions. Okay. So my husband and I are obviously dealing with this a little bit differently. Um, you know, we've doled out the consequences for her actions and what are those um, consequences? What did y'all do? Did y'all go scorched earth? Well, we didn't burn the bed yet. Um, so she was five days away from turning 16. Um, obviously, driving privileges have not been uh, given to her. So she is riding the big yellow school bus to and from school. Uh, her cell phone has been taken away. She no longer has a bedroom door. She has a bedroom, but no door. And she cannot participate in any after school um, extracurricular activities for the rest of the year. Big, big, big consequences. Yes, and of course, she doesn't feel she feels those are too extreme. So let me ask um, you this: just this is just adult to adult. Um, you're a parent of a daughter. I'm a parent of a daughter. Mm-hmm. Taking away her cell phone, taking away, taking her door off, taking away her privacy, taking away any after school connection with kids, taking away her ability to be with her friends. What is that? Draw me the connect that to underage sexual activity. I, we made those consequences before we found out that she had been sexually active. Um, and I, I think the majority of the reason for those consequences is because throughout the weekend, we got different iterations of lies. So we tried to at least open up a space so that she could just kind of tell us what was happening. When we, when we found out this was happening, we, we saw, we woke up one morning to uh, a fresh Michigan snow and saw footprints down our sidewalk all the way down the driveway. Oh man, that's like, road, a, like a horror we, movie. <laughs> this is how we found this out. Um, okay. Can I, can so, I, just, can I cut to the chases and, and, and yep. I'm going to say something direct and I'm saying this to my friend, not to, yep. not at you. Okay. I'm just with yeah. you on this one. When I used to work with college students all the time, I would call them in and say, hey, you've been accused of sexual assault. You have been accused of cheating. You, I have a whole bunch of texts where you threatened to kill some, like 
That was my job. I did that all day, every day. And every time somebody would leave, I would always tell them, whether they were an 18-year-old or they were a 29-year-old, whether they were my grad students or they were a freshman in college, I would tell them, you have 24, sometimes 48 hours to come back and change your story. And I'm going to allow it to be as though that's the first thing you told me. Because I know the terror that is coursing through your veins right now. And when we get scared, we have default. We just, we just react. Yeah. Right. And so you get to come back after 48 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, depending on what the issue was, then you're going to get in more trouble for being a person who lacks integrity than for whatever it is you did. Hmm. Okay. But I'm telling you that to tell you, it sounds like some of these are in totality. It sounds like two adults got really embarrassed that they missed something right across their hallway Mm. and they got really Mm -hmm. pissed off and they just used all of their power like a Mm. Marvel character. Yeah. And the thing that a 15 year old girl that's sneaking a boy into her room and then is sexually active at 15 is a body that is screaming for connection. Mm. And it's as though, it's like in the old days when, um, uh, I forgot what it is. They used to, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to think it up. They used to give, the, the cure for diarrhea used to be, back in the 1800s, was to dehydrate the body. Make it worse, mm. right? Okay. Yeah. And so for a brain, a tiny little adolescent brain that is screaming for connection so much so they're going to risk everything. Mm. That the solution can't be Less connection. And my guess is, with this type of response, my guess is, and tell me, dude, you could say, you're an idiot, Deloney, you're wrong on this one. And I would love to be wrong on behalf of your daughter here. But your husband didn't take her out and hold her and say, I'm so, so sorry. Tell me, like, okay. Um, (laughs) My guess is, this is a temper tantrum, Dad. My guess is, you haven't taken her out and said, there are some things about your mom you didn't know. I'm going to tell you about when I was in high school. I'm going to tell you about when I was in college. Because 15-year-old sexual activity is not safe. They're a child, right? right? And so I'm not saying they should be allowed to do this at all. I'm all about consequences. I'm all about accountability, okay? I don't care if you're a person of faith. If you're a secular, 15 years old is too early to be having sex, period. End of story. Conversation's over, okay? Yep. And so I'm with you on that. But the move has to be to increase connection not take it away mm-hmm. and that has to be done not through a i've got this huge power in this electric like these lightning bolts i'm going to fire across the hall into your room and into your life this is a dad that says as punishment you have to have dinner with me twice a week just us two mm-hmm. and i don't have time for that you don't have time not to because now this mm-hmm. cat's out of the bag yeah what i would tell you is i've never ever ever in all my years of working with adolescents i've never seen scorched earth be a be a response that wins in the long term mm. i just never have seen it i also can't imagine my teenager sneaking somebody <laughs> in their room across the hall from me right i mean i like i right. I, I can get raged out just thinking about it <laughs> but it's my job as the adult to remain the adult not to revert yeah. back to being a kid. Yeah. Has your husband just lost his mind? He's his weapon of choice is the silent treatment. Um, nightmare, so dude. That's a nightmare for a fifteen-year-old girl. Yeah, hasn't spoken to her since since it happened. And she and I have had lots of conversations. So my conversation with her, and you know, that's partly due to listening to you, is because. I've been able to take those tools and and go to her and say, you know, what you did, what your actions were, were wrong. You're not bad. I love you no matter what. I did stupid things too when I was a kid, you know. And so we've had those conversations. We're we're talking. We're doing all those good things. Um, it's yeah, but he just completely pulled back. And and I think because he read the text on her phone that kind of told us the story of what had been going on. He's hurt that he did this so young and that there was 
you know, kind of vulgarity. I mean, you don't think of your children at 15 as being, you know, that promiscuous. And I think it's the realization for him that that's what happened. And he just feels so disgusted is what he told me this weekend when I tried to talk to him. So, you know, I don't know how much. Does he not remember being 15? (laughs) Well, I think he remembers what, how he was when he was 15. So he's trying to protect his girls from being that. And then he handed him a smartphone with access to the planet. Exactly. Or worse, the planet. My buddy, Sean Ryan said this the other day. It's you're not giving your kid access to the world. You're giving your world access to your kid. True. Yeah. Yeah. And learns everything. And like, yep. I, I, I mean, you see what I'm saying? So you have a disconnected dad. Let me just say it this way. And this doesn't always play through with the literature, but it, it's something I live by. My daughter and my son, but I'm just talking daughters here because that's what we're talking. My daughter will get connected, deep affection from a man. That will be me. Well, that will be some boy that says, I love you. Can you Uh believe your dad did that? And whatever the thing I did is, I made her come in on time. I gave her a curfew. I didn't let her have social media. Whatever the thing is, she will get that connection, period. And so it sounds like, based on his reaction and his, I'm just, it's not about him. It's about his baby girl. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm really, I'm trying to think through that because I, like every other parent, you feel like, you know, what weren't we giving to her that we thought that, that's, we were. That's, 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 that's kind of where I'm at right now. I get that. I get that. But what you're yeah. doing is you're taking a 15 year old girl screaming for, will somebody just love me? And you, y'all have made yeah. it about yourself. What did we do? Yeah. What can we do? It's not yeah. about y'all right now. Yeah. It's about this girl who has lost not only her boyfriend, not only been super embarrassed, not only lost, she's lost her. Everybody. Mm-hmm. She's lost her parents, her mom and dad. You'll have siblings. Does she have yeah, siblings? Two older, two older sisters. Are they helping or making this worse? One. Well, no, they haven't really talked to her about it. Good gosh. Why? Well, they're not, they're in the military, so they're not local to her. And since she doesn't have a phone anymore, there's been no connection to her. I mean, when we've talked about it as a family, they've, their response has just been, wow, we can't believe how dumb she was. Yes. This is very dumb. Yeah. And if we can all count on 15 year olds to do one thing, it's dumb things, (laughs) right? Because they're 15. That's why they need us. That's why they need us. I can't tell you how important it is for your husband. So how do I get how do I get him to that point? You tell him you're going to lose your daughter forever. Tell him to call me. Yeah, and I I think if I say that to him, he like you said temper tantrum parenting. I think he'll just be like whatever. She doesn't respect me. She didn't respect our house. Why he doesn't respect oh, why her? Why would I want those things? Yeah. This is a 15 year old that is going <laughs> looking for somebody to say I have value. Yeah. Because my dad only gives me value when I sing and dance the right way and my bed's made up. Mm. My mom only gives me value if I don't, it, <laughs> if I don't do bad things or good. Like, I don't know. I don't know y'all's relationship, but yeah, this is the time. That he, 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 I'm going to give you a roadmap. He's not going to do this. And the person Mm -hmm. who will suffer is your 15 year old, but I'm going to give you and everybody listening a roadmap. He gets home from work today and he picks her up from school instead of the bus. And he takes her out for some kind of quasi nice meal, even though it's only three 30 or four 30 when you get out of school, maybe ice cream. And he says, I am so sorry. I totally blew this. I screwed this up when you for, for years, and I'm asking you to forgive me. And that is how that has to start. And I know there are millions of parents listening to this call right now going, are you freaking kidding me? She snuck a boy in. And, uh, 
Listen, we'll get to that. You can't do that. You can't. But there's a context to that behavior. Uh. There's a desperation to that behavior. Yeah. Now, just because she has a connected relationship with her mom and dad doesn't mean she's not going to want to hook up with somebody. Uh. They're experimental. They're 15, they're 16, they're 17. That's where they need parents to play defense, to be preventative. Right? Yep. That's why I'm so adamant about kids not having access to the whole planet. And my son had a, a friend last night who was going through a tough time on a school night. I let him go out and he was on the phone so, so late. And I let him. Because mm. it was right. He was learning some lessons. And so I'm not a robot. I'm not, I'm not soulless. But she's going to go looking for that connection somewhere. Yeah. Here's what she needs from her mom. Sex at 15 is dangerous. It's not safe. It's not wise. It's not smart for 50 different reasons. And if you have any wisdom to pass along, this is the time now. Not mom did some dumb things. It's time to get a little more specific because y'all read some text messages and things got really mm -hmm. specific. Mm -hmm. And I am asking you for your safety, for your future, to not be sexually active. <sighs> and I have to ask you if you're being safe when you are. Yeah. Both and, yep. right? Yep. Yep. And yep. one, the people that I uh, talk to on a regular basis that are all faith, the answer is no, it's period, and we move on. And then my friends and community who are not um, faith-based are all, just be safe about it. And both are in complete conversations. Mm. It has to be, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. But my God, if you do, don't be stupid. Don't, yeah. don't add stupid on top of stupid. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we, we immediately went to I know you our did. family position. I know you, I know and, you did. You know, I, uh, the whole. Help me with this. and Yes. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I just can imagine you only done the playbook. We're getting STD testing and pregnancy testing, and we're taking your door off. No phone, no. <sighs> right? Yeah. Totally yeah. get the impulse. We're in a conversation about safety if if she chooses to, you know, go down that road again. So. Right. Totally get that. But let's figure out ways she can connect with her sisters. Let's figure out ways that dad, if dad's going to continue to act like a child, mm -hmm. and his response is very childish. And I would tell him that if he was yeah. on the phone here. I don't like to talk like this about somebody's partner when they're not on the phone. But this, I, it, it, I, I have lived, it's been my responsibility to take care of these kids when they come to college for almost 20 years. And it breaks my heart because they get to school and they are squashed and they are completely unplugged from any sort of family system of values, of love, of connection, of safety. And they go to college and they are just sitting ducks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Because there's a whole bunch of different people, different ideologies, different, all kinds of different people that will say, I, I believe in you. And it's a nightmare. Yeah. <sighs> conversation with the, you know, we've been married 29 years and this isn't the first time that has, you know, he's responded like this is his behavior. I mean, he got upset with our middle daughter because she used purple colored dye on the bottoms of her hair. And I don't think he spoke to her for months. So at this stage in my life, I'm less um, accepting of his parenting so it, there's struggle between him and i and we're trying to resolve this i get that with a daughter it's a lot you know i know that little girl needs her dad in a bad way right now mm. in a real bad way yeah and i appreciate you trying to be an advocate on her behalf right yeah is there something that i can 
can counsel her to start the conversation since he wants. It's not her job. Her it will, be the adult. It's not her job. It will never be her job. Yeah. Do you have an uncle or a grandparent or a brother that can reach out to her and say the words, your dad is acting like a child right now and I'm sorry. I love you and I see you and I'm safe. Yeah, we have no family connection. He has no strong male relationship. Older sisters that can call and say, hey, we did this with dad too. He acts like a two-year-old with his temper tantrums and gets that gives us the silent treatment. Um, you're not evil. You're not bad. You're dumb. You did, you did something stupid, right? Um, yeah. But you're still you're still loved. You're still our in our gang. You're still our sister. Yeah, yeah. We I can definitely. She she can't sit in her room completely unplugged from planet Earth, and having the most important relationship walk by and act like she does not exist. That I mean I can't express enough. That is throwing her at some other dude. To say, take care of my daughter because I won't do it. Yeah. That's what that behavior is doing. That's my, my childhood, so I think that's why our <laughs> uh, okay. watch happen. <laughs> and let me say, that right there, I should have been more clear. I'm not suggesting you sit down and tell your daughter about the, all the men you've been with. Or haven't been with. I'm not telling your daughter about the time you let a guy sneak into your dorm room or into your bedroom. I am suggesting you sit down and say, let me tell you about granddad. This is hard for me to say, but I got in trouble when I was a kid and he ignored me for months and I'm so sorry. Mm. I'm working with your dad because this isn't right. Because at some point, some adult that cares about her has to call out this behavior. Yeah. And Thank you for saying that. if it's not him, it's got to be you. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I'll say this. He is choosing to not be on team family. Mm. And so he's going to blame you and say, why are you talking about this? You're going against me. He has opted out of this family system because he's choosing silence. He's out. He, he opted out. He, he put his dad card yeah. down and said, I'm going to go over here because um, my little ego is, is more important than wading into this and putting my 15 year old daughter's head on my chest and holding her tightly and letting her know she's loved because mm -hmm. we're about to go to hell. We're about to, the accountability on the back end is going to be rough, but she needs to know <laughs> that I love her. And then really it's a whole separate call. And I guess we can do this call another day. It's a whole separate call on what's the appropriate response. Like what is, what is appropriate disconnection, Right. Um, what is appropriate um, accountability when you find out your teenager is sexually active? Scorched earth doesn't work. Just letting it ride does is a terrible option. So what do you do? How do you wade into it? It's hard. That's going to be for another call. Lori, thank you so much for the call. If your husband wants to call me, man, I'll be happy to talk to him. <sighs> that little girl needs her mom and dad and her sisters real, real quick. We'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. I don't know about you, but I've had enough of the cold, the darkness, the steady stream of school plays and meetings and invites. My social battery is about to run completely down. Or maybe you're like some of my friends who are just bursting with energy, bouncing off every wall they can see, and they can't figure out why everyone keeps telling them to chill out or canceling on them last minute or no longer returning phone calls or texts. But if you found yourself stuck and unable to navigate low energy boundaries or maybe even venturing out to find a new group of people to do life with, it might be time to try therapy. Therapy can be a place to open up with someone who is licensed and trained to listen and walk alongside you and help you look for paths in the chaos of a low social battery, mismatched social energy, boundaries, and more. And if you're thinking of starting therapy and the thought of making appointments, getting out in the cold and traveling across town makes you want to pull the covers back over your head, try BetterHelp. BetterHelp is therapy that is completely online, so it's flexible enough to fit your schedule. Just fill out a short questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no extra cost. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. 
Visit BetterHelp.com slash Deloney today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Deloney. All right, let's go out to Pittsburgh and talk to Jeff. Hey, Jeff, what's up, man? Hi, uh, Dr. John. What's up, dude? How are you? Good, man. I'm uh, just looking through the notes that I wrote down to make sure I don't miss much here. I'm I'm a very detail-oriented person. I uh, I like to lay things out before I do stuff like anything like this. So, Well, I had a coworker call me a, and I quote, hot mess this morning, so... I need some I need some order in my life, so go for it, man. Read it read it out to me. Um, so this time last year, my uh, wife asked me for an, an open relationship, and I could see that she was struggling really bad and had been for a while. Um, and I felt like I didn't want to just say no to her. So basically, I said, "I'll give you a month, not do anything, not nothing physical." I said, "I'll let you collect information." Give me some data. Tell me a reason why you think this would help us. She was already with somebody, wasn't she? She had been already a year and a half before that for a year. Yep. Almost every time. And she, and she already had a plan. Um, like we laid out all these ground rules, what would happen if we got there. And, um, and she was with somebody like almost right away, somebody different than this other person. Um, and both of them were from work. And then, uh, so I, I am struggling with this cause I, I just, it wasn't after the first month I, I was like, this is not something I want to have anything to do with, which I knew before I even agreed to any of it. Right. If I would admit it to myself, but then, um, it all, she, like I asked her to stop and she said, no. And even though she told me she hadn't been with anyone, there was nothing there. Um, she was still sleeping with me. And then I find out later that she wasn't using protection with these people. Um, have you ever heard, the, then, have so, you ever heard the analogy about the, uh, rattlesnake in the paper bag? I, I think so, but you might have to refresh my memory. So a guy is walking down the street and he stumbles on a plastic bag and he opens it up and there's a rattlesnake inside buzzing. And that rattlesnake says, Hey, will you help me get out of this bag? I'm stuck in here. I can't get out. And the guy goes, dude, I'm not going to pick you up. You're a rattlesnake. You'll bite me. And the rattlesnake goes, no, I'm not. I need help. Like, I'm not going to bite you this time. Like, I need you to help me. And the guy's like, Ugh, okay. And he sticks his hand in and the rattlesnake just bites the crap out of him. And the guy goes, why'd you do that? You said you weren't going to. And he's like, I'm a rattlesnake. That's what I do. And then he goes, will you help me though? Help me out of this bag. And he goes, no, you just bit me. And he goes, I know. I, I had to get that out of my system. I'm a rattlesnake. It's hard for me not to. I won't do it again. The guy's like, no, you bit me. And he goes, oh, come on. And he goes, all right. So he puts his hand back in the bag to grab the snake and the snake bites him again. That's you. Okay. Your wife was cheating on you for a year and a half. My, How long have y'all been married? Uh, we've been married for six years, but we've been together since we were teenagers. So we've been together for almost 16 years. Okay. It's been happening before that. Um, Statistically speaking, so, it's, it's happened before that. Hold on. She's cheating okay. on you. Then she came up with a plan to get you to go along with it. And when somebody's cheating on you for over a year, that means she didn't just have a one night stand or a weekend fling or a two or three week, like, ah, what am I doing? She was with somebody for a year. And so that marriage disconnection you felt that even entertained the idea that I know it'll make my marriage better. My wife goes and knocks around with some other dude. That'll help. The fact you even entertained that was not because your marriage is falling apart because of something you were doing. It's because your wife is already in relationship with somebody else. Okay. And then you set up ground rules and you're stunned that she goes and sleeps with somebody else right away. Yeah, she broke every rule the every, first time. She's so. not a person of integrity. And I'm only telling you that because I love you, man. She's a so. person that lies and cheats to her husband of... and her ride or die for 16 years. I would like to say that since, so we went on a vaca family vacation and she, she on this vacation, we were driving through the middle of the night cause we have young children and I wanted them to sleep and her phone was still lit up cause everything was locked on it. Obviously it was still lit up. So I grabbed it and I found a bunch of stuff 
She was sending videos and pictures and all sorts of stuff to to many many people. Um, and from and from that day, we started working to try to fix this. And then I found out everything maybe a month and a half after that in July. And and since the day that she has come clean and told me everything, she has done every single thing I've asked. She has gone to counseling. I've gone to counseling. We're about to start couples therapy. Um, we've taken trips together. We've really tried to reconnect um, in all, on all levels and become better parents and just do things together. And, and to be honest, I've found nothing since then that says there was more. And trust me, I, I became a person who was searching phone logs and doing all this stuff that I had never done over the first 15 years. I'd never even been through a yeah, phone. You, you, you find yourself like Liam Neeson real fast. Like, I oh, yeah, fight. it was wild. <laughs> yeah, you just, fight, you just like become one of those murder podcast people for sure. I got to so solve this, right? The, so what's your question? Let's get right to it. What's your question? Um, I cannot stop thinking about her with these other people. That's right. I, um, I, I. I start visualizing and then I ruminate and then I spiral and then I make up scenarios in my head and I, I make everything even worse than it probably was. Maybe. And then I ask her about it and then I can see the guilt is crushing her because now that she's in a healthier place and knows what she did is doing to me currently, like, and I, for us, for my children, for her, I need to start feeling better and not being so crushed day to day and not having these two or three day spans where I just, cannot function because of the weight of this is killing me. And I just am not sure how to move forward with it. Okay. Often what happens in these situations is you are so empo um, empowered. is not the right word. You're so brought back to life. You're enlivened. Um, that's not really, I don't know if that's the right word. You're just given life again by seeing your partner try to connect with you by seeing her do the things that you wished had been happening for 15 years and it injects some life, some light back into a dark, dark, dark room. And what often happens is what you're running into right now. So I want you to know you're not crazy. You're not nuts. You're not alone. You're not on an island by yourself. This happens all the time, okay? That's exactly how it feels. Too. I, know, I know it does. It's super isolating. And you start to feel crazy. Because she's doing all these things that seems that she's all in. And it really feels that way. I know yeah. it does. You're not crazy. Okay. What you haven't done is a couple of things. You have not grieved this yet. I don't know that you fully metabolized what actually happened. You've been too busy searching and playing Matlock and trying to solve this thing. And then trying to get her to not wreck this whole car because it's flying down the highway and it's got kids in it and it's a thing and it's my marriage. <sighs> and you haven't sat on the back porch by yourself and stared off at the sunset and said out loud, my wife was cheating on me for years. My wife was sleeping with other guys. My wife was sending nude videos and photos of herself all over the place. People have my wife's naked body on their phones. Who knows? Who knows how many? Who knows who they've shared that with? Uploaded it to. And the only way, and I'm being really direct with you because the only way to heal, it's the same as if I'm looking at somebody and I'm holding both of their hands and I look them in the eye and say, your husband was in a car wreck and he has died. There is something about you have to Facts of your friends have to be told this is what happened and you have to sit in that and own it. <sighs> and what you're going to find is that you've been trying to keep your marriage together. Brother, the marriage you had is over. Yeah, I can definitely feel that. Y'all can, no question about it, decide to build something new. And we have. I think that's where we're at right now. I, if I could move forward, I, I think she is starting to. And kind do you, of do you see how this is turned on do... you and you're making yourself the bad guy? Yeah, I'm good at that. I know. It's one of your spiritual gifts. Stop. Quit it. <laughs> Quit it. It doesn't help the situation. The reality is 
the person who is the mother of your kids didn't stab you in the back. She stabbed you right in the face. And then tried to concoct a plan to get you to go along with doing it in the future. And you being a guy that always goes to the mirror and is convinced that you're the biggest piece of crap on planet Earth and you can't believe a woman like her would even be with you in the first place, much less have kids and be your wife, went along with it. Yeah, that's a hard thing to face. I know it is. Um, I know. Here's what she really needs. She needs you to stand up on two feet tall. Put your shoulders back. Y'all are keeping the car going. You are. But you have to ask yourself a question you haven't asked yet. What do you want moving forward? I want to make it work with her for our children and for me and for her. And I don't think it was ever about leaving me or any of that. These were both married men. I gave one of them 24 hours to tell his wife he lived locally. And then I made sure she knew the details. The other one wouldn't even meant to knowing her, so I got his wife's phone number and I made sure she had all the details. And did that make you feel any better? Um, no, not really. I was no. angry at the time That's and pure uh, anger and rage. I had nowhere to take it but to my basically what you called like the Sherlock Holmes things. Like I was just searching and that's I was right. digging and I couldn't stop and I felt like that's what needed to be done. And I would golf so clap if I was here. Multiple lives. Yep. She wasn't trying to destroy your marriage because she thought she was bigger than the whole thing. She did, though. She destroyed what y'all had. And you went along with it for a while. So, both of you have to look at the parts of your marriage that you love and want to hang on to. And you both have to look at the pieces that have to be gone. Okay. Then you have to decide, will you be a part of this new thing? And then to answer your question, at some point, you are going to have to do the hard work of deciding, I trust her enough to tell myself to stop ruminating. And I'm going to practice that. And it's going to take about a year or two, if not longer. And then 10 years from now, you're going to have a lightning bolt image pop into your head of your wife with somebody else. And you're going to have to say out loud, stop it or no, or not today. You're going to yeah, have to have some killer. sort of mantra. Yeah, they, they kill me. It's, it's, uh... here's, here, here's when it kills you. And this is when you have a choice. You don't have a choice right now because you haven't grieved this thing and your body is, trying, is taking over because it knows you're not driving. What it's trying to do is to keep you safe. And this woman who destroyed you and your marriage and your family unit, and you went along with it, is still living in your home and y'all are having good moments and your brain is screaming at you, Jeff, going, she's the bear. She's the tiger that just tried to kill us. And so it has taken over. What grief allows you to do is to own what happened, feel it, write the letters you need to write, have the conversations you need to have, slowly begin to come out of this thing, Begin exercising, begin moving, begin standing up on your own two feet, building something new, and then your body will stop trying to drive for you. Sort of. But it will still, man, it'll still drop some lightning bolts in there. That's when you have a choice. When those lightning bolts come, you can't stop those. You can't predict those. They just happen. It happens if you see your kid and you're in a tragic car wreck and your kid passes away and you get that image in your mind. Or if you are at a funeral and a loved one, a husband, a wife, a child is in a casket in that picture. Or if you're, there's someone cheats on you, right? Those images flash into your mind and it's your brain's way of trying to protect you. <laughs> you have a choice after that from the second after that. Am I going to sit here and worship that image? Am I going to ruminate on it? Am I going to create stories about it? Am I going to let it fill my body? Am I going to feel it? Or... Am I going to stop it? Nope, I will not. And here's the magic. You have to have a couple of pictures in your mind ready to replace it. That's a good idea. So get two or three photos of you and your wife together laughing. And if you don't have those photos, go get them taken. Cracking up, doing something funny. Back when y'all were in high school together at a concert you loved together. And when that picture of her with some other dude pops into your head, 
you say out loud, no, and then you close your eyes and you concentrate on that photo. Uh, I can tell you were definitely right. She was, there was stuff before all this too. It was mostly all emotional, but I found that too. Mm-hmm. And it just kills your whole memories. So I can see where you're coming from. Like my memories for the last 15 years feel destroyed. Yes. Because and the tiger is so still in right. your home. So what you have to teach your body is that tiger tried to kill us before, but I believe she's not going to try to kill us again. Okay. And give yourself some, sense. give yourself some grace. You're not crazy. You're not nuts. You're just going from one thing to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. And it sounds a lot, my brother, like you're getting dragged. You got dragged into this idea that, uh, man, maybe if my wife just hooks up with other dudes, then things in my marriage will get some spark back. Madness. Maybe I'll do a whole thing on open marriages. My God. But, um, geez, I'm all distracted. Or now we're going to go to this. Now we're going to go to this. It sounds like you're getting dragged through this recovery. Your recovery is something that you have to own. You have to take the leadership on. Okay? It's got to be you. It's got to be you. It's got to be you. Call back anytime, my brother. Uh, Hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Own Your Past, Change Your Future. I have a whole section where I talk about rumination and that. Actually, I'm going to send you Building an Unanxious Life, too. I'm going to send you both of them, both the books that I wrote, uh, my gift to you. And I talk a lot about some very concrete strategies for dealing with rumination, especially those flash images. Um, Also pick up a book by the great David Kessler called uh, Finding Meaning, which talks a lot about those flash memories as well. Sorry, my man. Sorry, my man. Let's spend some time sitting in the grief on this one. And don't do that alone. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? Deloney here. Listen, you and me and everybody else on the planet has felt anxious or burned out or chronically stressed at some point. In my new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, you'll learn the six daily choices that you can make to get rid of your anxious feelings and be able to better respond to whatever life throws at you so you can build a more peaceful, non-anxious life. Get your copy today at johndeloney.com. All right, we're back with a cool crap that happened. What's up, Kelly? All right, this is from Abby in Montgomery, Alabama. I started using the Carbon Diet Coach at the beginning of the year, and I love it. I've never, uh, I have never felt better about balancing what I eat. I don't feel like I'm missing out on life. Hello to the Milky Way I had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> and I'm losing weight. 10 pounds down. Wow. I have learned so much about what I'm putting into my body. Peanut butter is not high in protein. And the coaches are top notch at answering all of my questions. Thank you so much for the recommendation for expanding my knowledge base to your network of amazing people. Wow. That's pretty cool, man. Carbon app. I don't get a penny off of it. Not a penny. Zero. It's just an app that works, and I know the guy who made it, and he's a trustworthy um, trustworthy guy who knows exactly what he's talking about. That's amazing. Good. That's super cool, man. I love being able to give people tools that they can then use on their own because, again, these relationships, I've talked to people for nine minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and that's it, and then they go on. Y'all, y'all get off the phone, and you head out back into the wild. And so having tools to go with you is so important. And I especially love it when I stumble on a tool from that one of my buddies is using or that one of my buddies has created that is just a game changer. So that's awesome. Very cool, Kelly. Thanks for sharing. Um, we'll clip this and uh, send it over to Lane, to Dr. Norton, and let him know it's another life changed, man. That's fantastic. Well, hey, thanks for staying with us. Today was, man, this is one of those uh, get you in trouble kind of episodes, man. Whew. Leave your comments below. Direct them directly to Kelly. Uh, because that's where most of today's advice came from. Love you guys. Bye.